So let me do an example here. Let's go back to Google Scholar. And let's do group creativity. Let's say I only want to take in one citation. I'm going to click on this one. I don't want to import this. Click import to Mendeley. Should work here. So it's already imported this into my library. And it says add the document to where? I can add it to creativity. And um, add my tag here. And add a note even. Hmm. And then hit save. Now one thing you're going to want to notice right here is it says the import was successful. Do you want to save a website snapshot? The reason it's doing this is because Mendeley has two ways of taking things into your collections. The first way is this way, where it actually takes in the citation and all the citation information, the author, the journal, all that stuff. If it's on a, a particular website where it can't figure out what that information is, what it'll do instead is just take a picture of the website and just put that in with no author, no journal, just be a picture of the website. And that's useful because at least you've got it. You can go back later and add the citation information in later or find why it didn't work, you know. And it'll have the URL. So it'll have the URL so you can go to it. So it'll do that. But so if, if sometimes it'll say snapshot successful, that's why. It's because it couldn't find the citation information. So it just took a snapshot. All right. Actually, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let me do that again. I want you to see how it looks like in the. Uh, so now I've saved that citation that I found on Google Scholar. Um, it's opening up my groups to show me. This is it right there. This is the one I just barely found. I can click on it and see the details. The author, oh, see, he's got the journal wrong, so I might fix the journal. You know, this information or whatever. Sometimes it sucks it in really well, sometimes it doesn't, it just depends. And then I can add my tags here. Just hit save. That's how it looks. The tags are a list of uh, topics. Keywords, basically. Se separately. Yeah. So, all right. Was everyone able to get that import successfully? All right. Sounds good. I'm happy to. I'm happy to help later too. But that's the idea behind the import. What page? What page are we showing? So step four, you've got now your online, you've got your desktop, and you've got your little bookmark. So now you're ready to start finding articles with Mendeley. And there's, there's different ways to do this. Um, were you able to get it, Mary? Cool. All right. So the different way you can find articles is you can import when you're on the web, like I said. You're a Google Scholar or something like that. And then... This is what I find I often have to do in, in Eric. So we use a lot of Eric in our field. Um, what I find in, with, with Mendeley and Eric is, let me show you. Let's see. All right, class, what did I just do wrong? I didn't use it this way. <laughs> Okay, so here I have a whole list of creativity citations in Eric. What I would like to be able to do is go import to Mendeley and be able to suck in that whole list, just like I did with Google Scholar. It's not going to do it. It's not going <coughs> to. Oh, it, it did it. Well, I don't know why. It doesn't work all the time. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but look at that. It worked. That time. It doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Oftentimes what you have to do is actually click on the thing and open it up to this page where it's the detailed information and then click import to Mendeley. One at a time. So not as useful. Not like with those of you that use RefWorks and things like that where you can 
save them all to a folder and then just export the whole folder into RefWorks. Um, but this is how I work around that, is if it won't suck in to Mendeley automatically, I still have a RefWorks account, I export it to RefWorks, and then RefWorks, I go export XML format, it creates a file, and then I just import that file into Mendeley. And I did that several times last week, actually. So that's kind of how I do that. And the way you do that in Mendeley is right here. Just go file, add file. Let me show you, actually. I'll, I'll pull up this one right here, ethics sites. I think this is the one. Actually, it might be this is the one. So this file right here is, is exported from RefWorks, actually. And um, just hit open. And it just added a whole bunch of those RefWorks citations. So those are all the citations that I had from RefWorks. So that's kind of my workaround for it. If you want to use Mendeley and it's not working with Eric, that's how I get around it. So, yeah. What about PDFs that you have on your desktop? Good. That's a good question. And that's actually the next part of. Um, so you can import them on the web, you can export to <coughs> RefWorks, or you can just drag a PDF into the program. Let me show you how that works. So if you've got a PDF on your computer, you can do this with me. Let me go get a PDF somewhere. So I've got this articles folder here that I still need to clean up from my pre-Mendeley days. All right, so here's an article. I'm going to drag this one out. It may not work very well. Let's drag this one. So here's this PDF on my desktop. I'm just going to drag it in. Just drag it into Mendeley. Into the library? Into the library. The library page, right? Yep. My library. Oops. <laughs> okay, so you saw how I did that just now. I just barely grabbed the PDF, I drag it in. And it imported it just like that. And it already sucked in all the citation information. But, but you already. <laughs> okay, so when it was stored on your desktop, it had that information. So if I'm on the web, I might download the PDF. I do that sometimes. I'll download the PDF. I've got lots of those that I've just downloaded to my desktop. Just drag them over. But it didn't know anything about it. It didn't suck in the information? I don't think so. Maybe uh, I, I didn't know where it on some of the PDFs, it doesn't, they don't include all that information. It didn't take all of it. That happens to me all the time. Yeah. That's often a, a situation where they didn't, when they made the PDF, they didn't encode it, into they didn't encode it right. So if I've got, okay. Yeah. But here's another one. So this bonk article is not in my citations yet. But I just grab it, pull it over, there it is. And see it says, it puts it in this needs review folder, saying, I just imported this for you. You want to check it and make sure. And I'm going to check it. Yeah, it didn't do the journal right. So I'm going to have to fix that. But it got a lot of the information. It got the authors, um, except that that one's wrong. Yeah, so it kind of messed it up. So I'm going to have to fix that one. Sometimes it imports it well, sometimes it didn't. Um, you look at that, um, I'll go in another one and see if we can get it a little bit better. And can you find I usually just pull it into my library like this. So I just pulled this one in, this Olson one. This one actually did it pretty well. So you look at that, Educational Researcher, it got all the information correct. Now I can get this and just drag it to whichever collection I want to put okay, it in. Okay, I see. Or drag okay. it into a group okay. down here okay. to this share with other people. That kind of thing. Does it always drag it into that unsorted folder first? Yeah. Unless you have, if you have it open, if you have a so folder, you have a folder open, yeah. you can drag it <coughs> now, Otherwise, it will put it in the unsorted folder so you know that these are things I've got to file away somewhere. I haven't filed them away. So that's, if you've got a bunch of PDFs on your desktop, you can just grab all those PDFs and just drag them over. Let me show you another thing you can do. Is you can go up to Mendeley in the preferences. This is going to be pretty cool. This is going to be useful for a lot of you. You go into your preferences in Mendeley and you go to the watched folders right here. Sorry, where's preferences? In, on a Mac, it's under Mendeley Desktop. It's probably under edit. It's okay. under file. File. Then you go to watch folder. Go watch folder. Yeah. 
Now what this is going to do is I go through here and I can pick any number of folders. Like for example, I have a folder on my desktop called articles, right? Where I just kind of dump, you probably have it too, I just dump articles into there. I can make Mendeley watch articles. I can find my folder right here, say watch articles. The second I put an article into that folder, it'll get automatically sucked into Mendeley without me even having to do it. So if I have that be my downloads folder, I can be like an Eric or somewhere, just download the PDFs, download, 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 download. And as soon as it hits that folder on my desktop, it goes and gets sucked right into Mendeley. Automatically. So that's another way to get articles into your Mendeley. And you would do that here under watched folders is what they call it. You find the folder and uh, put a <coughs> check, check the folder that you want to watch. On a Mac, it's under Mendeley Desktop Preferences. And then the Preferences is under Watched Folders. And then the PCs, it's under File. File Watched Folders. So it won't, it won't put it into a specific group. It'll just put it in your own documents. It'll put it in the unsorted, probably. I haven't played around with it a whole lot. If you've got a folder highlighted, and you've got Mendeley open at this time, maybe it'll suck it into that collection, I'm not sure. What's the difference between unsorted and all documents? All documents is everything, sorted and unsorted. Let's see, I've got um, lots of articles in my groups. Then in all documents, it's just like the ones I import. Yes, it's a shared group that doesn't show. It's more like all documents. At least that's so it won't share. If you add a PDF to my to our group, that doesn't show up in my all documents. I don't think so. Because I, I, I'm in your group, and I only have all documents or all my stuff. When you added, you added something recently to it, and it didn't add it to my group. If I want it to be in my stuff, I have to drag it to my documents. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it's just saying this is someone else's document. Yeah. That you're borrowing right now. That's what it's saying. Basically, yeah. <laughs> That's probably okay. a, a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the way you would get stuff in the Mendeley, just to review, we talked about import it when you're on the web using that button. If you're in Eric and it won't import well, then you can export it to RefWorks and then import it. <laughs> you can drag the PDFs. You can download the PDFs to a folder that's being watched. Or the other thing you can do is just search on Mendeley, like I did. I just found a collection, asked if I could join it. Once I've joined, I can go through and suck in all their citations and just suck, 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 suck in all their citations. So you can do that as well. And if they're open collections, then I can just, I don't even have to ask for permission. I can just go and suck in their citations. So it's another way, as Rachel would teach, I wouldn't do that as a first step, especially for my students, but maybe as a final step, to see if there's anything you're missing in your literature review. Do maybe, do maybe a search on Mendeley and see if other people have put together collections. Or maybe they found some harder to find documents that were really good. And so maybe you find a few that way. It's kind of a final step, perhaps. So. All right. So how are we with step four? Did we get some PDFs into our Mendeley? All right. And I'm happy to help people later on, too. OK, so just a few tips about uh, importing your PDFs. I forgot I was going to talk about where I put my little. Oh, can I ask a question? Yeah. Would you do that if you have multiple, um, if you have copies of documents, will it, in different places, will it still import them? You can Does tell it to watch as many folders as you want. Right, but what if you have the same document in several folders? Then it'll bring it in twice. And you'll have to later go on and delete one of them. I've got lots of duplicates in my video. And they're not super good. Mendeley's not super good yet at identifying duplicates and automatically merging them and things like that. It doesn't do that. Just a couple tips that I'll tell you as you're doing this. So a tip on when you're sucking things in from the web is make sure you tag your articles now rather than later, especially for my students. That'll save you so much more time. Because then you, instead of having a big old unsorted which you can see I have, <laughs> a big old unsorted folder. Tag them as soon as you, 
and, and put them into a collection. As soon as you find them, they'll save you a lot of time later on. So that's one step. Uh, so I think I think no, this is a different thing. So step five with Mandalay. So now you've got a whole bunch, like me because I'm messy, a whole bunch of unsorted stuff. And you drag this stuff in from all over your desktop, right? You were saying that? So if you're like me, you've actually got not just one articles folder, but like a whole bunch of articles folders. And they're all over the place. Sometimes I organize them by topic, sometimes I organize them by research project. They're just kind of all over the place. So I've got all these different folders on my desktop with articles. Um, and I want to kick them all in. And so I drag them all into Mendeley or whatever. I pull them all into Mendeley, but they're still sitting in all those random folders. And if I want to go to that actual PDF, I have to find that folder somewhere on my desktop. But Mendeley does a really cool thing. It will organize your PDF folders for you. And let me show you what it looks like. This is how Mendeley has organized my PDFs. It's organized them by author, by year, by journal, and there's the PDF. And the PDF is named author and year. So that, now that, that was not the way I named that PDF. That PDF, when I, start, when I put that PDF in the Mendeley, it was S95432, right? Which is what you get when you download from Eric or something like that. It like has a bunch of random numbers, and you're like, ah! Mendeley did that for me. It organized it for me. So let me show you how that, how that works. You go into Mendeley. You go into your preferences again. And this time, instead of doing the watched folders, you're going to do file organizer. And so first, you have to click this little box right here and say, please, Mendeley, organize my files. And thank you very much. God bless you <laughs> for doing this for me. So first, you click the, the little button up there saying, organize my files for me. Copy my files into your own system so that it's organized for you. And then you tell it how you want it to be organized. So I said, you, you kind of saw how I did it. I wanted it to be author, year, journal, and then PDF. Now you can switch this around if you want. If you think in terms of chronology, and you want year to be first, you could put year first. So I could put author back up here, and then put author down here. Now if I were to click OK, what it's going to do is take all those PDFs of mine and reorganize them so it goes year, author, journal. I don't like that personally. I like having author first, so I'm going to put that. So that's how you do this. Yeah, you just drag and drop these little bubbles down. And you can see I didn't use title, because you can imagine titles are really long. So if you use the title of the article as the title for a folder, for a really long time. There's not going to be anything else in there. Yeah. And there won't be anything else in there. So it's kind of dumb. And then you got to click this. If you do this much, what it's going to do is copy them over, but it's still going to be called document S9543 whatever. So then you got to click this little thing and say, I want you to also rename the file for me and give it a more meaningful name and give it this name is what I told it I want it to do. So now it's going to be called author year journal. <laughs> So that's called file organizer. Are there any questions about that? So you just have to make sure your little renamed document files is checked too. Then. Yes. Otherwise, it'll organize it for you, but it'll still not be named in a good way. So. Sorry, Kevin, for some ro roaming around. You're fine. Any questions about the about that? That's one of those little things that Mendeley does that I just love because it helps me be organized. And I just find that to be so helpful because I am a mess. You can look at my office and you'll know it's true. It's just terrible. So it's one of those little things that mentally does. All right. This is what the folder will be. Do we have any more questions at that point? Ready to move on? So step six, 
is to actually, so now you've got your articles, you pull them into Mendeley, Mendeley's organized them for you so that you can always find them forever and ever and ever. Now you want to actually start annotating them. And this is really cool. So what it does is take Adobe Acrobat and kind of combine it with <coughs> RepWorks and allow you to do the annotating and the citation stuff at the same time. I kind of already showed you how that works. But if the PDF's there, you can see which ones have PDFs and which ones don't. The ones that have PDFs, you just double click on it, pop it open, and go up here to highlight. Highlight stuff. Oops. That. If you want to delete the highlighting, by the way, this is kind of tricky. You have to right click. So you right click, remove highlight. And if you want to leave a note, you can do that in a couple ways. You can leave a sticky note by clicking this button right here. So just leaving a sticky note somewhere. Or you can go over here to the notes panel and type a note right here. Is that kind of note general for the whole document? Yeah, it's kind of more of a general note for the whole document. Um, but if you're in our class uh -huh. and you choose to do that, remember we talked about write down <laughs> page numbers. Because if you don't write down page numbers, you're going to end up citing it and not remembering <laughs> which page it was on. So page 409, I really like, you know, you might put a quote from someone, but, but put the page that you quoted it from. When, when you do this kind of, these kind of notes, if it, this paper is part of a group, then everyone has access to that. A private group. Private groups will share PDFs with notes. A public group doesn't. If you're, you make your notes um, just on a within <coughs> one library, and then you later add it to a group, do those two go with it, those notes? Or? That's what we were exploring, and we weren't sure if that really worked, right? The notes being copied over? Yeah. Um, you did copy one of them over, didn't you, to the art group that had notes? What was the name of the article? A lot of the notes that we have in our group, I've, our, I've added after I added it. So it has to be in the group you think is working. Uh, I don't know. What was the article? The answer to that is I, I haven't So I'm thinking if I want to keep my notes private, because they're just representing my thinking about our Yeah. that I do want to also add it to the group. Yeah, well, that's, that's the question I've got already, so I'm going to look at that. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question yet. So, I need to look at that. If you want to add a PDF after you've added in the citation, so you finally find it, yes. add it to the, and you want to merge it or yes. something. That's a good that question. Possible? That it is possible. It does not. I've heard from some students say, I tried it, it didn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work as well as it should be. Yeah. So sometimes what you may do is just drag the PDF in and suck in the citation information again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And delete the other one. And delete the other one. But yeah. theoretically, like this one doesn't have a PDF. Theoretically, I could go up to File, and there's like a Attach Document, I think, or something like that. Where is it? It's also down for the <coughs> smaller window. Is it? Where is that? Within the right-hand right window, the big window, <coughs> right, the down for this place to attach. Oh, add a file right there. So theoretically, that's how you do it. Yeah. What doesn't work as well is to suck in the PDF and then say, well, this one has the PDF, but they got the journal wrong. This one had the right journal, so I want to like merge them. That doesn't work. Yeah. So, unfortunately. So. Anyway. Now let me show you. Okay, well, I'll show you. I think that's coming up. I'll show you later. So that's the annotations. A couple things to note about the annotations, too, like I showed you before, is these sticky note annotations are actually linked. So these are links to the specific part of the document, which is kind of nice. So that's kind of helpful. For my class, just so you guys are aware, in our group, so this is our um, 750 group, we're doing literature reviews. I've gone through on these PDFs. Let's get a good one. All right, so this is an example PDF. I've used the tagging to tell you what part of this article I thought was good to look at. So when we talk about the methods section of a lit review or the questions of a lit review, th th those are the tags that I've got right there. 
all right? And then what I've done is use the um, sticky notes to kind of take you directly there. So if you want to look at the method section of this literature review, just go down to method, and I will take you right to that part of the document. So as, as, as we're talking about these different parts of a literature review, you can see some examples that I've highlighted. So. Okay. All right. So that's step six, start annotating. Step seven is now you want to put the citations into Word. You want to make, you want to have it format your reference list for you. And it will do the, the thing that EndNote does when it does that thing it does, you know, where you insert the plugin into, has anyone used that before? Where you do the plugin? Does it work all the time for you, Rachel? I, can't, I didn't know if I was just an idiot, but I couldn't get it to work. No, it, it sometimes works and sometimes, and it depends on what version of Word you have. Right. And the newest version of Word, it doesn't integrate as well with that as it used to, and so there, there's problems with it. For EndNote and RefWorks? Oh, yeah. yeah, so theoretically, you can put a plugin into Word so that as you're typing along, you say, insert this citation from Mendeley, and it'll insert it and then automatically start making your citation, your reference list at the bottom. But like Rachel said, that almost never, it just doesn't work all the time. So the way I, I do my citations is I just keep, tra I just put my little parentheses and say, Smith, so if I'm writing an article, let's, let's kind of show an example. All right. And I'm going to cite Moose in Azevedo. All or whatever. So I'm, I just go through when I'm writing, and I just put that information there. When I get done, and I want to make my citation list, I go and um, make my reference page, and I go over to, to Mendeley, and you just highlight the ones you want to highlight, and you just copy, and then paste is what I do. Whoops, it's going to make me this. Save it. So I copy paste, and it cites the citations for me. So, and you can change how it cites, whether it cites an APA or, you know, Chicago Manual or, or things like that. But that's, that's how I do it, is I just copy, and this will work in Google Scholar. If you use Google Scholar, it'll work in anything. You just copy, paste. So going back to, like, for example, for the faculty, Someone emails you and says, can you send me the citation of that article you wrote? And you're like, oh my gosh, I can't remember. That was like five years ago. And you can't remember the same article. You can just go up to the My Publications folder, and all your articles are there that you've written. And say, all right. And you just write your email to someone. Dear John, here it is. And just paste it in. Send them the citation. So, anyway. So that's how you format your citation list. All right. And the way you change that is you go up to help. I think that right? No, tools. Where's the change? Citation style. So you go up to view, citation style, and here's where you could change it to other styles if you wanted to. So you start writing for an American Journal of Business Education, right? For uh, Jared there. They use Chicago Manual. I'm going to change it to Chicago Manual. Copy. And then paste it. And it puts it in Chicago Manual style. Or at least it should, theoretically. Looks different. So. so the way you change that is up in View, Citation Style. You can change it to the one you want. <coughs> All right. So, yeah. with the plugin, you don't use the plugin with Word? I don't. Okay. For two reasons. One, because it usually only works about half the time, so I end up having to go through and clean up my citations anyway, because it'll miss some and miss yeah. something like that. The other reason is because it breaks up my flow. Because as I'm trying to write, it's asking me to insert the code from Mendeley so that I can format it, and it breaks up my flow. So I usually just put the names and the year. I just say Smith 2009. And then later on, I do a search and replace. I do not a replace, but I do a search for parentheses. And then you find all of my parentheses that I've done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we already created groups. We've talked about that. The one tip I'll give you with, with groups is I found there's a little quirky thing with Mendeley. When you create a group, which um, we created a test one here, and I put a bunch of documents in there, I need to add members to it. There's two ways to add a member. I can add my contacts. These are the people I'm already friends with. Or I can invite someone who's not on Mendeley yet with me and ask them to join the group and they have to make a Mendeley account and all that kind of stuff. Don't do this. For some reason, it never worked. It, people just got lost and, the, and Mendeley would say it was connected, but they weren't really connected to me. It just never happened. So become contacts first. And then once your contacts go here and you can add someone to it. So I'm going to add <coughs> um, Ben to this group. The search for Ben. There he is. Click on it. Send him an invitation to join this group. So now he's going to get an email saying, do you want to join this group? And then he'll get to join the group. Let me just show something to, my, to the students. Because we have talked about um, research journals and you know, keeping track of the, site, of, the, of the searches you do when you do literature searches so that you don't have to replicate a search. Particularly helpful if you're working with a team because you don't want to be doing this extensive literature search and then someone else replicates that extensive literature search and it's just kind of a pain. I use this as a research journal kind of a thing. So I might put right here and say, search Eric for DE, collaborative creativity. And then here you just paste in that information from Eric. And I paste it in right there. You know, found 110 articles, you know, limited by last 20 years or something like that. You can say whatever you want to say, and it keeps kind of this running dialogue of what you've done, so that you always know what you've done. Now if I go back later and I go, what did I search for last time? I searched for collaborative. Okay, I want to search for something different. I don't want to replicate that search. So it's kind of a little, little history. Let me show you an example of how I did this with um, somebody that I'm doing a literature review with right now. I'm doing a literature review with Randy Davies, so we created this group. And here I am talking about, we decided, or I decided that for my section, I was going to review the last five years of a particular set of journals. And that's how I was going to do my literature searching. So I, I just kind of made a note. I've started searching for the last five years. Um, these are the journals I'm thinking about. I'm ignoring this topic. I got way too much. I'm thinking I'm going to go with just three years instead, because five years was too much information. And so you can see this running dialogue here. And then Randy could respond to that and say, oh, Rick, you're missing a journal. Why don't you do this other journal instead? <laughs> you know, he knows what I'm doing. And I, rem I remember what I'm doing so that I don't end up doing it twice. So it's a nice way to have your research journal with your citations same place. So. All right, step nine. We're almost at the end. The last thing you want to do is save everything. So in Mendeley, there's a sync button right here. When you click the sync button, and if you're online, it's working right down here now. It syncs everything on my computer with everything on my online. So if I save stuff online, so if I'm on a different computer, for example, I can log into Mendeley online and save articles online. And then when I hit sync, it'll take those online articles and bring them down to my desktop, or vice versa. It'll sync it back and forth. This button right up there, sync. Sync button. Yep. And so you can see it's, it's thinking right now, it's adding documents to the different places. I can work offline. So I can be working offline, dragging PDFs into Mendeley, yada, 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 adding them to my groups. And then when I'm online finally, I hit sync, and it'll suck all those PDFs up to my online group. I put them on my online group for my, my teammates. Now the trick, <coughs> there's something I've got to tell you about this though that we found kind of through sad experience. Don't rely on syncing as your backup <coughs> mechanism. Because sometimes you'll think you've got everything synced, Mendeley will crash, and you'll lose some of your documents. That's happened before. Mendeley's still kind of in beta. It's not quite yeah. solid yet. So you're also going to want to go up to help and create a backup. And you're going to want to do that you know, every now and then, once a week or something like that. Just help, create a backup, put it on an external hard drive or something like that. And that way you're always going to have um, your, your files. Okay, someone was asking me particularly about iPads. Was that you? Mm -hmm. All right. 
So another cool thing about Mendeley is they have an iPad iPhone app so that it syncs to your collection and you can view all of your documents when you're on the bus or things like that. Um, you do not yet have the ability to edit the information while you're on, on, you know, on your iPad. You can read the PDF, but you can't highlight the PDF, you can't annotate it, you can't take notes, you can't do any of that stuff. They say that that's coming in the next version of the iPad app. So it's not there yet. All you can do right now basically is launch it, and I can show you, I've got it, if you want to come later, I can show you, it's on my, my iPod. You can launch it, and you can view your collections, and you can open a PDF and, and read the PDF, and that's it. But they're going to have a paid version coming up where you can actually edit the information. So that, unfortunately, that's all the information I've got for you on iPads and iPhone apps, but it's coming. That's still pretty cool, though. I'm really excited for when that becomes fully operational, and I can be on the bus reading the PDF, annotating it, making notes, sync it back up to my online group for my teammates to share. You know, it's going to be really cool. So look forward to that. Like I said, Mendeley's only been around for about a year and a half, so it's still pretty new. And it's still beta. They're not even version 1.0 yet. So there's, there will be bugs every now and then that you'll run in against. And if you come up with a bug, you can email me. If I don't know the answer, I can ping them and try to figure out what's going on with it, why it's not working. Um, but the thing I like about Mendeley is I like their vision for the way this should work. And even though it sometimes doesn't work the way it's supposed to, I think they've got a really good vision. And I'm really excited for as it gets better developed, you know, as it gets better integrated into Eric, for example, and things like that, that hopefully this could be a really cool thing when they get done developing. So that's kind of it. We, we have time. If you want to hang out, I can come over. We can... If you're struggling with any part of it, we can help you get it up and running. I'd really love for everyone to be able to leave here saying, I got Mendeley working for me. Do you have a question too? Well, the question is, um, importing from EndNote, can you, can you do that? Yes. Um, I'm not, one thing I found with, I haven't done it myself with EndNote. I've done it with RefWorks. And I found that when you go in RefWorks, and I'm not really sure why it works this way. All right, so I go to RefWorks and I want to, is it tools? I want to export my references. Export to a text file. Oh, oh, it's right there, so stop. It was, it was that list right there. It gives you this list of options, and I'm not sure how EndNote does it, but it probably gives you a similar list. Mendeley says it'll open all of these formats, but for some reason it won't, and I don't know why. So you have to kind of play around with it until you find the one that works. Like I found that I think it's, I think it's this one that works really well, RefWorks XML. You know, I don't know what it would be for EndNote, so you might just have to play around with it and try different EndNote versions until it works for you. But yeah, you can, you can export from any of those tools. <coughs> and you can also export from Mendeley to, if you end up hating Mendeley and want to go back to EndNote, you can export it back to RefWorks or something like that. You know. So. I'm not sure first. if it will all come as well as you would want it to. Um, I know there's a little button, a little icon, I'm not seeing it on any of mine here. This thing right here. This means that Mendeley has a link to the PDF, but didn't download the PDF at first. So you click that button and it'll download the PDF. But I'm willing to bet that it's probably not going to be as robust as RefWorks at all. Because yeah. the library pays for RefWorks, we've actually made more integration between the library databases and RefWorks than, than wow. any of these other ones. So that's why the Get It BYU button appears in RefWorks is because it's integrated. it's integrated that way. But the links will work. The links that come in, if you get the links right, they'll be the, the proper links to take you back. So you have those links, you just won't get that 
button feature that we do. Okay, so just do it. And to be honest with you, I haven't tried exporting citations with PDFs from RefWorks. <coughs> so if someone wants to try that and see if it'll, if I export a citation with a PDF in RefWorks, will it import the PDF in the Mendeley too? Because then you could, what you could do is just use RefWorks to download all the PDFs, right? And then just suck it into Mendeley if you want. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just trying to try that. Things in reference. Yeah. So. The uh, last thing oh, I would. Once you, you hit that button and you, you export out of RefWorks, okay, then how do you import into Mendeley? Just oh, the way you do that is you just go up to Mendeley and you go to File, and you're adding a file because you're adding just a big long text file. Okay. Add file. And it figures all out. Which makes me think actually that it may not be able to suck in the PDFs because it's just doing a text file, is what it's doing of all the citation It'll information. Have the so that could be, I'm, I'm, that probably won't work. So, but that's how you would add all that citation stuff into memories. Any, um, so I just want to make you aware too that we've got this article. If you're interested in it, where we kind of talk about Mendeley, compare it a little bit with some of the other tools, talk about why it might be a different vision for how to do academic research, more social kind of vision. Uh, I mean, it's not a killer article, it's just a little little thing. But if you're interested in it, you're welcome to have a copy. You know, make a copy of it or something. And I'm happy to help, you know, anyone that gets stuck using Mendeley. Um, any questions about it that some got stuck along the way, didn't quite get something figured out, and they want to get it worked out before they leave? Do you want to come back? I will come back to that table. I will come back to the table. Um, last thing I would, I would just say is I'm probably going to do this workshop every year. Um, did I go too fast, too slow, or about right? Yeah, and you know, I wasn't able to do all the things. Well, I guess for my class, you guys are free to go. You got off an hour early today. Go do your annotated bibliography. <laughs> Read your uh, chapters for next week. But we'll talk next week about deconstructing the arguments and um, identifying, you know, and how to start analyzing this, this, the literature that we found and sorting them into categories and doing the annotations. So, all right. <coughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank and I will hang out and help anyone that wants help. Thank you. Cool. That was good. Thanks, everyone, for doing your pizza.